In this video, we're going to be going over three tips to land you more and bigger catfish. Guys, these three tips are super, super simple, but they are so overlooked by a lot of fishermen out there, including me at one point in time. So these three, without these three tips, really, what happens is you're going to go out and you're going to have trips that did not meet expectations, or even worse, you're going to have trips where you just come up empty-handed. And for years, guys, this was me. And if this sounds like you now, don't worry. Stay tuned. We're going to change that. All right, so as we get into these three tips, I want you guys to keep in mind that they are very simple, but they are overlooked. So you want to really let these three things sink in. I heard these for years, and I let them just go to the back of my mind. I knew about them, but I never done anything about them, guys. These three tips, if you will follow these, you're going to be a lot better off. You're going to catch a lot more fish and bigger fish at that. So, the, so tip number one is going to be gear and tackle. And I'm not talking about you need expensive stuff. I'm not talking about you need cheaper things. I'm not talking about a price or anything like that at all. What I'm going to talk about with gear that's going to help you out is that you guys need to make sure that each piece of gear and tackle complement each other. Basically what I'm talking about is let's use a circle hook for instance. So everyone knows that a circle hook um, you cannot slam it home. It has to take some time and turn in the fish's mouth. And that's what they're designed for. The hook point is bent in. It's not really exposed to catch just anywhere. It's designed to catch in the corner of the mouth. And sometimes you'll get lucky and it'll hook in the top of the mouth or something like that. But it's designed to fish in the corner, the hook in the corner of the mouth. So what can we do to complement that circle hook? Guys, we don't want to go buy a very, very stiff rod, meaning that, say, here's your rod. When something bites, it's just going to go like that. Guys, you do not want that. What you want is you want a really good rod that has a lot of backbone, but it has a really, really soft tip. So what happens is when the fish, it, it gets to kind of load up. You know, that gives that uh, circle hook a little bit of time. That rod with a soft, you know, a soft tip rod is going to complement that circle hook very well. Now, there's something else that you can look at that's going to complement your circle hook is your line choice. You do never ever want to go straight braid with a circle hook. Braid has no give to it. Again, you need a little bit of give to give that circle hook some extra time to set the hook. That way, you're not missing as many fish. Um, you'll see a lot of guys that use braid and then they'll have a mono leader for that shock, that absorbing, that little bit of stretch. You know, that is what they're doing when they put that on there because they know that complements their circle hooks. Guys, look at your rigs, your rods, um, your line, all this stuff, and make sure that they complement each other. Uh, whatever style hook you use, get a rod for that. Get your line that complements it. Use the right rigs to complement that. You're going to have a lot better hookup ratio, and you're going to start catching more fish and probably bigger fish. Tip number two is about finding fish. Guys, what you want to do is start doing your research, guys. The technology is insane today. It's out there for you guys and for me. And for years, I just like, I was this guy who would go out and throw my poles out and hope that the fish would come for me. Um, sometimes that works. Sometimes we get lucky. I got lucky sometimes, but a lot of times I didn't. And since I started going to the fish, that has really changed the game for me. So basically what you want to do is you can start out, you know, if you want to start catching really big fish, guys, start out by asking, uh, you know, the internet about the record. So, uh, like for me, I would type in the Tennessee state record blue cat and see where it was caught. See where the previous one that was held before it got broke was caught at. Were they both caught in the same body of water? Were they caught at different places? Uh, start researching that body of water then. There's a lot of people starting to catch fish there. Yeah, start going to that body of water and don't just go and fish at one spot and say, oh, it ain't as good or something. Fish all around it. Learn the lake. Uh, learn about uh, the, the, what other people are using for bait and everything. Another really good thing that you're going to want to research is food, guys. I know you guys have heard find the bait, find the fish, right? Everybody's heard that and like again, that's one of those things that just go to the back of your mind. You don't really think about it a lot. But if you've got shad in your water, if you've got mussel, um, bluegill, crawfish, whatever you know the food source is, when, when the catfish get keyed in on those things, you need to make sure that you're there where they're at and that you're using that bait. So in the wintertime, the shad have a big kill off, right? Um, these cats know that. So wherever you you have these big wads of shad that are starting to die off, that's where the cats are going to be at. They know that that's coming, and they know they're going to they want to be there. 
And another thing that they know is that that you need to know that they are dialed in on that bait. So you need to be fishing with that bait because they're keen in on it. Um, same thing with the bluegill bait. You know, when the bluegill go on spawn, and you know they know that they're coming up there, the bluegill on the nest, and they're wanting to guard that nest. Them catfish want them bluegill. Got to get that get that stuff together. So the last tip that we're going to go over is a really a combination of a lot of things, and it's probably one of the most important because. You do, it's called practice. So the third tip is practice, and you want to practice things. Guys, you want to practice setting the hook. Or you're not getting hooked up right, and you're missing them. What you want to do is you want to practice, and again, go back to step one and make sure that everything's complementing each other. But practice, guys. A, a bass fisherman, for instance, doesn't get a brand new lure and go out there and catch a 10 pound plus bass every single cast, does he? No, I mean, they have to learn how to work that lure. Uh, they'll even go steps and finding lures, or finding ways to work that lure that no one else is doing to give a fish a different look. Now, you don't have to go in that in depth to figuring out for catfish, but what you do need to do is you need to practice them. Like I said, make sure you're, you're getting your hookups right. So what I like to do, and this may be different for you, is when I'm reeling, I was bad to, as soon as I would start feeling tight line, I would want to, you know, set my hook, get him in there. Uh, but what happens is I, I would pull it right out of the mouth. So you really want to practice getting that good feel for making sure that you feel the rod tip load up a little bit before you pull. That That's going to help you catch a lot more fish your hooks up. going to be. But you got to practice that. You're, you're going to go out there and you're still going to mess up. But if you keep practicing those things, practice your rigs, practice your knot tie, and practice all these things and uh, you're going to get better at catching more fish so it's not going to do you any good to go to where all these big fish are at right if you keep missing them if uh, you're not using the right stuff that complement each other so practice all this stuff and put it together because everyone wants to go out there and see the big picture you know they want to see that big cat get caught for the big picture but they oftentimes forget that it takes a lot of little things to make a big picture and if you don't got those little things put together, you're never going to see the big picture. So, guys, um, thanks for watching this. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing to the channel. That would be really cool. We do a lot of fishing stuff on here. It would be awesome to see you guys in the next video. Uh, leave a comment on this one if you got some more tips to add, what your thoughts are on this. And, um, again, hopefully I'll see you in the next video.